Snow, brought to you by the Racing Post and Coral. It's York Week. My name's Sam Hart. I'm stepping in for Ross Briley. Some may know me as the host of the Racing Postcast here at the Racing Post. But yeah, like I say, we've got four fantastic days action at York. We kick things off on day one with the Judgment being the highlight. Day two, we've got the Yorkshire Oaks. Day three, we see the return of Stradivarius and also the Nunthorpe Stakes. And on Saturday, we have the Ebor Handicap. Really looking forward to what's going to be a fantastic week. We're going to be here every evening previewing the action. It's going to be a, a cracking day on day one. We've got seven races to get through and I'm joined by a great bunch of guests today starting off with Racing Post Tipster Mr Robbie Wilders. Robbie how are you? Hi Sam good to see you in there. Makes a nice change. I know yeah it's the uh, first time I've been in this yeah. seat. It's a rare Let me one. tell you this guy can present all right. <laughs> We're in safe hands here tonight. <laughs> yeah unfortunately Ross Briley some may have seen on Twitter he's actually stuck in Peterborough. Um, so yeah well unfortunately he isn't here tonight but he will be back tomorrow I can promise you that. Let's go to Skype then and go speak to Mr Tom Siegel. He's in a lovely Coral Polo. How are you, Tom? I'm good, thanks, Sam. Yeah, all, all going good. Back from holiday, back from Turkey. Too hot for me out there. Too hot for you there? degrees. Cool. Climb you. Cool. Couldn't stand it. It was hot enough here, to be honest, Tom. Are you looking forward to what's going to be a great week? Yeah, can't wait. Can't wait. Love York. Uh, not my f I find it tricky because I think it's called Specialist Track up there. Some horses just don't like it at all. It's sand based track. Some horses don't like it, but great meeting. Any day you see about by it's a good day, isn't it? So really can't wait for tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. We'll get the thoughts on the world's best horse in a, a moment's time. But David Stevens joins us from Coral. David, are you going to be heading to York this week? Good evening, gents. Yes, I will be heading up there first thing in the morning. Uh, it's interesting what Tom was saying there because Robbie and I were talking before we, we came on air about York. It is great racing, particularly this week. But I think we all find it quite tricky from a punting point of view, which is, is quite weird, really, because speak to any of the jockeys and they say it's a pretty uncomplicated track. I mean, it should be. It's flat. It's wide. There's plenty of room. There are no hills to negotiate. But yeah, for some reason, as I say, Tom said, it does throw up some, some interesting results there, which, of course, we as bookmakers don't mind too much. Yeah, indeed. And we have some very open looking handicaps to get stuck into throughout the week and especially on today's preview. And we start off with race one. It's the 150. It's a heritage handicap over five and a half furlongs. The betting with Coral currently looks like this. We've got Dusky Lord and Dakota Gold, uh, Anatelis Bay, nine to one joint favourites. Uh, Zazarini is 10 to one, Ancient Times, and Mackinac, 11 to one, looking at 12 to one bar those. Robbie, I'll start with you. Dakota Gold is a horse who absolutely loves it here at York. Five wins here in his career. Second at the start of the month at Ripon. That was off a mark of 101. Now up a pound from that run. Could we see this horse back to winning action at, at York? We could do. I mean, as you say, he absolutely loves the place. Um, he probably looks high enough in the weights now for his age. I mean, he's eight years old. He's not really getting any better. I'd rather look at someone a bit more exposed. Um, I mean, Dusky Lord was a bit shorter early in the week. Uh, I quite like him. Um, I mean, has a really good run at Goodwood last time. I think there's an extra half furlong here. That can prove crucial. Uh, I think he's going to enjoy that. But again, you don't really know the correct part of the track where that's going to be. He's drawn in 19. I want one slightly lower as well. Uh, quite like living the dream from 11 as well. Um, progressive horse, two starts ago, he was a good second to admit Barhi at Sandown in a listed race. He's off 99, he didn't go to plan for him at Chester last time when he was favourite, but he was drawn wide there, he didn't get as good front running position. Um, yeah, I think he, he looks at a fairly decent price, but it's it's really tough, isn't it? It is, yeah, Dusky Lord, 9-1 to one currently with Coral, and I've seen plenty of selections already coming in on the chat. Remember, this show is live and interactive. Do get your selections in. I will try and read out as many as possible. Tom, I find a fascinating horse near Good Eye, who runs here for Jessica Long. This horse came over from Sweden, ran in the Stewards' Cup, kept on really well to finish fourth at big odds of 150 to one that day. Could we potentially see this horse run well again off a, another decent mark, potentially? First of all, Sam, what a smooth start. Let's hope that bloke stays in Peterborough. Let's hope he gets stuck in Peterborough. We want you back. I'll do all four days some for you if you really want. Uh, good eye. Uh, we had a bit of a draw advantage, I thought, uh, at Goodwood. I thought they uh, the, the high numbers were really massively favoured that day. Uh, he, he showed a lot of pace, though, didn't he? So, yes, why not? I'm sure he can run well. I personally don't fancy him. Look, sprint handicaps, I think we've been through this before. They're not my thing at all. Ones at York are down the bottom of my list. I have no idea about sprints at York, ever. But every time I say that, I seem to find a winner. And I quite like, as Robbie says, uh, three-year, I like just improving horses in all races, really. 
and I thought Bond chairman. I thought it was interesting that Graham Lee was on him rather than the uh, Project Dante, who won the, who was sort of a big talking horse last year. I like Bond chairman. I thought he ran really, really well two starts ago when he was just touched off at Ascot. He was a little bit disappointing last time uh, back at Ascot again. I thought he'd win that day. Uh, might have been quite a good race. King of Stars was in there. And maybe King of Stars took him out of his comfort zone. King of Stars is back in here, drawn 22. I'm not sure if that's good. But I think Bond Chairman's a horse with plenty of upside still. I like him. Uh, I thought I thought he'd go well. Uh, but as you say, I, I, I don't really understand York Sprints. Everyone tells me you need a front runner and a low draw and then something held up from a high draw win. So uh, my my preference at, the, at this stage is Bond Chairman. I think Zarzini's an improving horse. He was a good two-year-old for Mick Halford. Uh, the Barons, of, I think it's the Barons, isn't it? The Barons uh, have got him right back to his best. I thought he traveled like a dream last time and then sort of stuck on well again. So they would be my two against the, the field. But the, the, coral, the nasty Coral boys have got it at nine to one, the field. I think that's about right. It's, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> Bond Chairman, 14 to one. Currently with Coral. Dave, it's an open looking race to kick off proceedings. Have we got any extra places here? It is an open looking race. And yeah, we are five places each way here, Sam. And also, I mean, we talk about hard luck stories at York. Well, we have our beaten by a length offer on all York races this week. That, of course, is you get a free bet up to £10 if your horse is beaten by uh, a length or less, of course. We might well need that in this race. I mean, any shortlist has to have Dakota Gold on it, just given, given how good his track record is and how important York for, uh, form is here. Uh, like Robbie, I too like living the dream. I thought Ryan Moore was a, a notable jockey booking for that horse. And the stable had the second in this race last year with this horse's half-brother living the moment. Um, another one I thought was interesting was Sunday Sovereign. I mean, he's inconsistent, but his best run this season was second here at the May meeting and trained by Tim Eastby. You'd have to think that this meeting has been the target for some time for this horse. And again, Will Buick was an interesting jockey for that one. So, yeah, a couple really for me, Living the Dream and Sunday Sovereign, but it's a tricky start. It is indeed. There's a lot of love for Sunday Sovereign actually down in the chat. A few people liking Mackinac uh, for the Camachos. They're currently operating at a 23% strike rate. Um, but yeah, Sunday Sovereign is very popular in here and potentially could run a big race 20 to 1 with Buick on board. Let's go through the selections then. Robbie, who are you going to be with? Uh, the price is Living the Dream. Living the dream, Tom. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm. This is too hard for me these sprint handicaps, but Bond Chairman is my token selection, Sam. Bond Chairman and David Stevens, who are you going to be with in the opener? I will go with a Sunday Sovereign, but we've got to mention our own Monda Measure, of course. Ross will be oh, watching oh. on from Peterborough, and he's been back 16 from 25. Someone is keeping the faith with Mon our old mate Monda Measure. <laughs> Mondemej, a horse who just doesn't stop running. I'm sure Ross will be fancying that horse tomorrow. Let's move on then to the next race, which is the first of the group races that we'll be looking at. It's the 225, the Tattersalls, Acom Stakes, over seven furlongs for the two-year-olds. And the market's up on screen now. Local Dynasty is your 9-4 favourite. Millstream, 100 to 30. Indestructible and Chaldine, 11 to 2. Hectic is nines and double figures bar those. Now, Tom, the favourite here is Local Dynasty, who only won his maiden earlier in the month. We don't know kind of how well the form's going to work out that race, but did it an impressive star and probably heads the market on the base of his breeding and potential. Yeah, and the punters. I saw he was seven to two, four to one earlier in the week. He's now down to nine to four. The horse's noble star last time. Oh yeah. Yeah, they went really, really slow and then really, really fast at the end. And the sectionals will tell you that they finished like rockets in that race. They were running ten point three and ten point four sectionals. The pair of them, noble star and millstream. It's quite hard to do. You have to be very, very good to be able to do that. So Millstream is definitely an interesting contender. I think Jane Chappelheim is a brilliant trainer for, for, with the uh, ammunition she has. And Millstream is definitely a danger. I think I find it hard to see sort of the ones down the bottom. I mean, I know they've got, I know Oviedo, for example, is a well-bred horse, but I just think the level of form is going to be slight. The likelihood of Ed Bethel having one as good as Charlie Appleby in the Acom, I think is pretty low. So while he's 11 to one shot, I'd prefer local dynasty at nine to four. I think it's between the top two. I'll, I'd slightly prefer local dynasty, but I'd be very interested in see how Millstream runs because I'm a, I'm a nobles. I've got nobles style on my wall. He's, he's my pin up horse at the moment. I love him. So if Millstream goes well, I'll be very happy. 
Yeah, local dynasty uh, was a very talked up horse at the start of the season, was the Coventry favourite, unfortunately didn't run in the race, but yeah, was a, I mean, was very impressive the last day, and Tom's mentioned there, Robbie Millstream, who, you know, has the form with Noble Style, finishing half a length behind in the last day, um, potentially this horse here could, you know, increase the form of Noble Style shots in the gym crack later in the week. He could do, yeah, I think of the top two, I prefer Millstream. Um, I'm a bit cautious about local dynasty. I mean, he did win in good start at Newmarket last time, but we don't know how that form is going to work out. And there was, he had a stable mate that was withdrawn just before who was priced similarly. Uh, he was on route at the start, he didn't run. So, I mean, if that horse would have run, would he have, would he have been, I don't know. It's all with some butts, but... There's plenty of good two-year-olds from the Appleby stable yeah, exactly. at the moment. So. I feel like his price is factored too much into that sort of angle. Um, I mean, this race as well, you just go back through the recent years. Last year, 25 to 1 winner outside of 5 1. Um, there's been massive price winners 9 to 1, 10 to 1, 16 to 1, 16 to 1, 11 to 1 in the last 10 years. I mean, these are horse, these are juveniles. The only horse here who's got experience of York is the outsider, Shaquille, and I quite like him. Um, I mean, that can prove very handy. I mean, Royal Patronage uh, won this last year. He was the only horse that had experience of York before that. I think that's, that's quite a key factor, and we just don't know how good really any of them are. I mean, he's one from one, won it in good style on his debut for Julie Camacho, should improve a lot. Uh, the other one I thought Oviedo was also interesting, uh, very well entered up, very well bred. I rate Edward Bethel as a trainer, I think he's good, Ted Bethel, Ed Bethel. Um, but yeah, it's just it's a kind of race I wouldn't want to be taking nine to four necessarily because we essentially know very little at this stage, don't we? Yeah, we do. Stevens 99 in the chat says that Millstream good run against the Coventry favourite last time. Uh, Tom Leach likes Chowdy, a horse that ran really well at Newbury the last day. David, it's the first group race we're covering. Who do you fancy in this? Yeah, interesting one there. Uh, Robbie mentioned Shaquille there, the 25 to 1 shot. And he's absolutely right. I mean, I met this race last year, Royal Patronage burst several bubbles. I mean, there was a host of well touted two year olds in the race 12 months ago, all put in their place by the big priced outsider. Um, I like Chowdy now, which the last contributor mentioned there. Mm. The form of his Newbury win, he's, both his runs have been at Newbury, he progressed from his first run to win. A race that's worked out really, really well. Uh, Ryan Moore riding for Andrew Balding. I get you know, the link up, obviously, it's owned by Judd Mont, so no great surprise to see Ryan on it, but clearly that's a, a big positive as well. Um, I thought 11-2 to two about that horse, three places each way was, was good enough for me. Hey, Chaldean, yeah, good winner at Newbury the last day. Uh, more mention for Julie Camacho, stable at the moment. Interesting runner and her stable's in flying form. Destiny Sound says that. Um, and Jesus, like Shaquille, Robbie, he's with you um, in this good taste. Yeah, I just think Shaquille is is too big, really. I've, I mean, it's one of those races where a lot of these also priced up on their connections rather than what we know they've done. So I'd, think I'd rather take a flyer at a big one. OK, Shaquille for you. Tom, who's your fancy? Uh, listen, it's not a race that I'll be having a great... Betting interest in I like I'd like local dynasty to win just because I think he's the classiest horse by and it's not even close but I'll be watching Millstream very closely. Okay, and Dave Stevens, your selection. I think we've got a price boost, have we? Yeah, so Chaldean would be my selection in this. But interesting, yeah, hearing Tom describe Charlie Appleby as possible, probably the best trainer in the world. That is high praise indeed. And Charlie's got a good-looking uh, bunch of rides or uh, runners on this opening day of York's meeting. And Charlie Appleby to have a double or indeed more than two winners tomorrow, was two to one, is now out to five to two. So for all those Charlie Appleby fans, and I know there are plenty out there, five to two that they get off to a flyer tomorrow. We'll find out if Tom likes that price boost in just a second as we move on to the three o'clock, <laughs> the great Vulture stakes. It's the Croup 2 for the Colts and Geldings over a mile and a half. It's for the three-year-olds only. Um, and David, we mentioned the Godolphin horses there. Another favourite here in Secret State, who was very impressive at Goodwood. But look, this is no walkover. No, it isn't. And he's looked really impressive, obviously, in, in handicaps. And this is a, a different kettle of fish in terms of he's stepping up to group class. But, you, I mean, looking, this is obviously a recognised St. Ledger trial. This horse is currently 8-1 to one for the St. Ledger, the same price as Akal, the Aidan O'Brien horse, who's second favourite. Now, Godolphin obviously have New London, who's the current 2-1 to one market leader for the Ledger. So this will potentially give them a nice, a very nice second string for Doncaster if he takes his step up here. Uh, so he has been mightily impressive, but... This is another step up again. OK, I cal, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. I was there at the car the last time and I thought this horse stepping up and trip could be even better. Robbie, I thought, depending on how much rain, we haven't actually talked about the rain as of yet because we, we don't yeah, know how we much officially hit York as of yet because what yeah. I've seen is the ground's still good to firm and I think yeah. the final storms have missed, missed York it. from what I know. So are, are we kind of just thinking that it's going to be good to firm tomorrow? I think, yeah, it might maybe 
they'll need quite a lot for it to change to kind of good to soft, I'd say. Um, I would expect good to fair, maybe good, but I mean, I'd be really sweet on El Bodegon if uh, mm. if the rain came at the prices. I, he just reminds me a bit of Pile Driver a couple of years ago, just came in a bit underestimated. He's the highest rated horse. He's won a group one. He's a strong stayer. Well, I thought he was good against Ernesto the last day. Yeah, he was. I mean, yeah. He's, I thought he looked good. Yeah, that was a good performance as well. I mean, he's finished ahead of Elder Elder rather than Pisba Deal with a mm. you know, top three-year-old. So I think, he, I think he still looks too big, but the ground would be a concern for me. Uh, I think Ical's probably a good thing here. Um, yeah. I mean, that performance at the Cara was, was really good. Um, I mean, I don't know how he's turned around 11 days after finishing last in the St. James's he's Palace. disappointing in that race, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. But he's, he's 11 days on and he's gone and won that in in the style of potentially Group 1 horse. Um, something to bear in mind, O'Brien is only one from 22 in this in the last decade, and that was an odds-on shot. But I just feel like this horse could be, apart from Luxembourg, his best, his best three-year-old colt. And I like what I saw there. Best performance on race post ratings. I think he's going to like the uh, extra two furlongs. I think there's plenty to like. Ical probably should be favourite in my book. OK, Ical, yeah, 11 to 4 currently. Not a, a bad price there. Tom, it's a five-runner field, but each with their chances. Yeah, all got a chance. Uh, I don't really fancy Grand Alliance, to be honest, but the others got a chance. No, to be honest, Robbie, I don't really fancy El Bodegon either. I just think he's a little small son of Kodiak. If he comes up against these proper horses, he'll get he'll get wiped out. So I, th- I thought Doville Legend had the best form. I thought his second to New London last time, giving him weight with the Derby second behind, is the best form. Uh, I personally, I'm um, in the ICAL camp. I, I, uh, I, I backed him for the St. Ledger after his win at the Curra. I was just really impressed with the way he hit the line there and, the, and, and what he did there. I think the step up in trip is going to really suit him. Secret State is obviously, you know, stepping up in class, but he won very easily last time at Goodwood. You know, he was in front a long way out and they were never going to get past him. I thought he won with plenty up his sleeve. So while I think he's, he's obviously a harder race for him, I wouldn't put it past him uh, winning, as the prices would suggest. I don't. And Walker Stars has got his quirks too. So I'm, I'm being rather boring tonight. I think it's between the top three in the market. I'm an ICAL fan simply because I've already got some history with him. I've been writing about him for the last three months saying that he might win the St. Ledger. So I've got to stick with him here. I wouldn't be surprised if Doville Legend beat him tomorrow. OK, yeah, Doville Legend. You gave a big mention there, Tom, for Secret State. Do you quite like the Coral Price boost this evening? Yeah, well, I love Charlie Appleby. He's the best trainer in the world. I, I, it's, it's there for everyone to see. Group one winners every weekend almost, you know, different sires, different things. He's not reliant on one sire to provide him with winners. He, he's just brilliant. I think he's absolutely superb. Six furlong sprinters, middle distance two-year-olds. I think they've, I think they, you know, they've, after a few years of being sort of in the wilderness, they've unearthed a absolute superstar in Appleby and I'm a massive fan. So uh, yeah, the price boost five to two. I don't know what he's got to come. Got obviously got native trail, but is that I, I can't remember him having much in the other races. So, I don't know. His secret state's going to have to win, isn't he, for for for, for the uh, for, for it to come in. And I prefer Ical and Doville Legend. I prefer the former Doville Legend. I preferred the potential of Ical. Okay, Ical and Doville Legend given big mentions there by Tom David. Who do you like? Uh, well, listening to Robbie and Tom has done nothing but confuse me even more. I mean, look, if Secret State can take this step up. Uh, to group class in his stride, then he'll win and he deserves to be favourite. But I'm, I'm an ICAL fan as well. I'm originally like the other two guys. I just think he's been crying out for this trip. I mean, he's bred to get further than the mile or two he ran over last time. Say he's prominent in the St. Ledger betting. Um, although, interestingly, Aidan O'Brien's record in this race that Rob, Robbie referred to, there's a slight negative. I think this is, considering there's only five runners, this is every bit as tricky as the first two races. Okay, ICAL, if those even confirm your selection, Robbie? ICAL. ICAL, potentially a good thing in that race there. Let's move on to the highlight of the uh, day, and it's the 3.35. It's the Jubman International Stakes, part of the British Champion Series, Group 1 for the three-year-olds and older, uh, over a mile and a quarter. And this is where we see Baid stepping up in trip for the first time. Betting's on screen with Baid as a 2-5 to five favourite currently with Coral Mishrif. 7-2 native trail is 8-1. We did hear that Alan Kerr was a non-runner this morning. High definition 33 to 1, Dubai on a 50s and Sir Busker 66 to 1. Um, David, I'll start with you because the Coral Ambassador, Jim Crowley, takes the ride here aboard by. You've probably had a good chat with him today. What has he said about his ride and is he confident this also get the 10 furlongs? Yeah, I did have a very good chat with Jim. He's only got the one ride tomorrow, but he's, as he said, what a ride it is. Um, look, he's a common... I said to him, do you enjoy this? And, and he said... 
I, I enjoy it when it's over. Passing the post is the best feeling. Now, obviously, nine times out of nine, he's passed the post on this horse and it's all gone brilliantly. And as he said, all being well, it'll be number 10 tomorrow. There is a pressure with it. Obviously, this horse is unbeaten. He's being compared to Frankel. He's stepping up here for the first time. But as Jim said, the reason he will try and enjoy it and the reason he doesn't feel as much pressure as he thought he might is because he just believes he's on the best horse. Simple as that. He said, the horse has always given me an unbelievable feel. On breeding, he's a half, uh, sorry, a full brother to Huckham, who's won over a mile five. On breeding, he should get the trip. Jim says he's always given me the feel that he'll get further. Um, he said, all grounds pretty much come alike. This horse, he's won on good to serve, soft to good to firm. It's not a big field. If, if Jim says, if I do my job right, this horse should win. So, uh, yeah, look, it's, it's always very... So it's contagious when you talk to a jockey about a horse like this because naturally, you know, they, they, they have so much confidence and, and, and you kind of do pick up on that. But I do, I look at it, look, Mishriv is a wonderful horse. This is his trip. He was brilliant in this race last year. I mean, he beat Alan Curse. You could argue quite how solid the form is. And and he will ensure that this is a proper test for for uh, the favourite over this extended trip. But on everything we've seen, Baid is a better horse than this. He's got a wonderful turn of foot. Um, and the game needs superstars and and... Yeah, I for one hope he makes it 10 out of 10, and I think he will. OK, yeah, Bide. He's very short, 2-5, to five. should be going in. I did pick up the racing post like a good colleague I am this morning, and um, yeah, saw James Stevens' piece. He spoke to Richard Hills, who's the Shadwell manager for, um, yeah, obviously looking after Bide, and he's very confident this horse is going to get the 10 furlongs. Tom, are you fairly confident, or do you think there could be a bit of a battle on his hands? I'm confident he'll get the 10 furlongs. I'm not confident that he'll like the track. Uh, that's my worry. I would be much more worried about York for him than than thing. Just simply because I'm, you know, 25% of horses just don't like York. It's, it's very obvious that you know I've read Keels this piece earlier in the week where he said, uh, I think his quote was that you always forgive a horse a run at York. Well, we don't really say that about Ascot or Sandown or anywhere else. It's it's just that York's York's York. Some horses just don't like it there, and that's where Mishriff comes in, isn't it? Because we know he loves it. The only thing I've got against Mishriff is that he's looked a bit funny the last twice, hasn't he? He's missed yeah. the break twice, and he missed it really badly at Ascot. And people are saying, oh, it's, you know, will John Gosnell will sort that out? I don't know. I think when horses get these uh, these traits, they tend to stick with him, stick with them. If he gets well, be if he gets behind at the start, York's not the track to be coming from way off the pace, especially against a horse like Baid. So I think, I, you know, I mean, I, I really want Baid to win. I love unbeaten horses. I love superstars. I'd much, you know... I'll be really, really disappointed if he gets beaten, especially by Mishriff. Not that I don't love Mishriff. I thought he was brilliant here last year. He was, my, he was one of my favourites two years ago. But I think he's just on the, you know, just I'm starting to think about it a bit now. And so I'm I'm in the Baid camp. I hope he wins. I think he'll win and, uh, you know, sets up the season. You know, maybe he'll have a crack at the arc. You know, wouldn't it be brilliant if he if he won this and then when they had a crack at the arc and he got the best horse at a mile, a mile and a quarter and a mile and a half. I always thought Frankel should have had a crack at a mile and a half. But it was a real shame that he never did. And uh, if Bade wins this, you never know. We might all be in Paris watching him uh, in October. That would be good, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it, Jazz? But I think, well, I don't know. I mean, obviously, they're going to have their options on Champions Day as well. See how things go over 10 films. They might go for the British Champion Stakes. Or they could go for the QE2 again and drop back to a mile. But I've got a feeling this horse is going to really excel over the 10 furlongs. Robbie, if we turn the clock back a year ago, Mishra's performance giving weight to a lot of decent three-year-olds. Obviously, we had Love in there, the, the Oaks winner. I, I thought that was a really impressive performance from Mishriff, and I've, I've got a feeling that Bide is going to go and win this, but I don't think it's going to be as easy as everyone thinks. Don't you? No, I don't. Oh, I do. Do you? Um, yeah. well, I you think, how, I know, how many lengths is he going to win by? Uh, four. Four lengths? Maybe. Something like that. Three. I, I actually think high definition might spring a surprise and sort of like make him... He's I think high definition is going to probably go hard to try and... Because he's more of a one mile for one more four or so who can make the run in. Mm. I think you might I think they're probably thinking that's the way you might beat Baid. Um I yeah, Mishriff, like Tom says, I've been disappointed with him lately. I mean, keeps missing the break. He put in a he he ran much better at Ascot in the King George last year before York than he did this year behind Pile Driver. I mean he threw in a bit of a stinker in Saudi Arabia. Uh Sandown he did run well again but he did miss the break. Do you think he would have won that race? Uh, I think so, yeah. You do. But also the champion stakes at Ascot, beaten 13 to their favourite, he really should have won that, I thought. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I just sort of think the Baid is, is the best. I think he's going to be fine over further. I think 4 to 9, 4 to nine, 2 to 5 sort of prices 
actually reasonable value, to be fair. Uh, yeah, I could see higher definition um, outrunning his odds, though. I think he'll, he'll go hard and make it a test, as I say. But uh, I think by whichever rate, way you run it, if they don't go quick, they go hard. I think he's just got the best engine. Okay, high definition, potentially one at a decent price, but Robbie thinks that Baid will win. I think a lot of people are going to be thinking that Baid will win this. I've mentioned there, David, to Robbie about how many lengths, and Robbie seems to think potentially four, and I think that's part of the price boost this evening. Yeah, we have another one. Obviously, he's a fairly pro prohibitive price for a lot of punters at two to five, but if you think, like Robbie, that he's going to win this with real authority, to win Baid, to win by over two and a half lengths, is 13 to 8 from 11 to 8. So that could be another way of getting with this horse. But Tom, I just want to go back to you. I mean, you mentioned there about how your, you know, is a funny track and horses just a, can, can you, you know, you've watched horse racing for many, many years. Can you think of a reason why that would be at York? Because on paper, you look at it and think, you know, I say it's a flat track. It's, it's wide, there's plenty of room. It's a long straight. Any ideas why York does have this tendency for, you know, for some horses just don't take to it? Yeah, I, to be honest, David, I don't. I presume it's something to do with the surface. It's it's obviously very sand-based. You see, when it gets very fast, they kick up a lot of sand. Can you think of another track in the country where they shun the shortest route? <laughs> At York, At York, they never stick on the far side when they go. You know, very seldom these days, do they? They always come up the middle. Now, I don't know if that's jockey designed or whatever, but that doesn't strike me as a track that people consider that the jockeys consider to be very fair. Otherwise they go the shortest route the whole time. So I don't get it. I've never understood it. Mark Johnson doesn't get it. I've spoken to him about it. His horses tend to have a terrible record unless it's very fast at, at York. When it gets soft, it gets very soft, very quickly. Uh, I just don't know. I don't know. Hopefully the rain mm. stays away and we have nice fast ground because when it's nice and fast, there's not a better site in the country than horses running around York, despite some of them not, not liking it. I don't know, but it all changed when they, it all definitely all changed when they uh, had Royal Ascot at York and they realigned it and redid the track and everything. It's just a different track to how it used to ride. And I, for one, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I'd probably overcomplicate it and shouldn't really worry about it, but I do, I do think horses don't, there's lots of horses that don't like York and that's always in the back of my mind. Mm. It's going to be interesting to see, isn't it? It really is. And, and I think a lot of us are going to be hoping that Baid goes and does the business, makes it 10 from 10. So Baid for yourself, Robbie? Even each yeah, I think Baid, but higher definition to trail him home. OK, potentially high definition. Could try and outstay them from the front. Tom, who's the selection? Yeah, well, I hope very much that Baid wins because I love horses like that. I mean, that's what racing's all about for me. Uh, I'd be really upset if he doesn't. But obviously, Mishriff is, if his Mishriff is back to the form that he won it in last year, he is a threat. But I still think Baid will beat him. OK, yeah, Baid essentially beat Mishriff. And David Stevens with the Coral Ambassador Crowley, he's going to go and win this, is he? <laughs> yeah, it's just the one ride for Jim and it's going to be win number 10 and he's going to follow in the footsteps of horses. Obviously, the, the mighty Frankel. Jim won this race on Ulysses. And, of course, the best of them all see the stars won this in 2009, who, of course, is Baid's dad. So be keeping it in the family. And talking of dad, Sam, we understand your dad <laughs> is a bit of a fan of this show and you didn't tell him you were making your presenting debut tonight. <laughs> Dave Hart, your son reckons you'll be sat at home in tears now. He's doing you proud. Oh, God, I can't imagine what he's doing right now because I didn't want to tell him, and I've got a feeling he's got it on right now watching this and, and probably, yeah, a, a proud dad, we could say, David. So we'll have to, um, we'll have to see. But, yeah, it's, uh, yeah it, it's fantastic to be on here. I'm enjoying myself. We're hopefully going to find plenty of winners for our viewers. So let's go on to the next race. We've got a big open handicap to get stuck into. It's the 410, a stayers handicap over just over two miles. Um, and the betting looks like this on screen now. Master Milner is 11 to 2. Soapy Stevens and Zoffy uh, 6 to 1. Alfred Boucher 7 to 1. Frank and Stella 8 to 1. And then we've got double figures bar these. Tom, I'll come to you first. The favourite here, Master Milner, looked very, very good at Goodwood. Been put up five pounds for that run. Do we have a feeling that he could go and back that up? Uh, not for me, Sam. Not for me, Sam and Sam's dad. How you doing? <laughs> Having a nice time? He's getting plenty of attention tonight. He's probably loving this. <laughs> uh, no, not for me. I think he's up. this is a better race, much classier race than the one he won at Goodwood. That was a marathon trip. Uh, I like one in this, Sam. I like Alfred Boucher or Boucher or Boucher or whatever you want to call it. I'm going for Boucher because he was a as David Stevens would know, being a man of great culture, a very famous French sculptor, Alfred Boucher. And 
I thought he ran a cracker at Chester last time. I've been banging on about this for about three weeks now, and no one's taken any notice. But Chester is riding totally differently the last couple of track, last couple of meetings than it has I've ever known. You don't want to be drawn low. It's one. It's absolutely weird. At the, at the, at the meeting where Alfred Boucher won, uh, was second the last time. He was he ran down on the rail, and all the horses that were drawn low and ran on the rail got stuffed by him. And Manakan, and we all saw what Manakan did. He came out and won the Shergar Cup, well backed, well punted uh, last or a couple of weeks ago. And I thought Alfred Boucher ran an absolute blinder in a mile and a half handicap there because he was stuck on the on, in the quagmire on the rail, while all the winners were coming up the outside. And he still stayed on to finish second to a good stable mate of his. Buick's been booked. Ian Williams is mustered in these two mile handicaps. I think he's got a massive chance. I really like his chance, Alfred Boucher. I think it'll go really well. Alfred Boucher currently seven to one here. David, I don't know if you've got any um, extended places here, but Mark and Charlie Johnson, they've got three entries in this race. No surprise in these big staying handicaps. I mean, Sophie Stevens is the shortest of the lot, but you wouldn't be surprised to see one of their outsiders go and do this. No, indeed. Uh, the, the Mark Johnson, or Mark and Charlie Johnson, I'd write three runners here, and they are the next price boost, which is three to one from five to two that they win this race. Uh, Soapy Stevens being well backed actually, and I can understand why. Uh, Master Milliner, he has looked pretty good. He's in great form, and I think he's, he's a worthy favourite. Will be and say he's only just holding on at this moment in time. It's been good money as well. Have you missed me? He's in the list there at twenty. Uh, sorry, at ten to one, but he was twenty to one twenty-four hours ago. So he's been very well backed. And Alfred Boucher there, of course, as Tom knows, most famous for his piece of work to the goal. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, have you missed me Kieran Catterson in the chat he's a big fan of that horse uh, a lot of love for Frank and Stella in the chat as well here mentioning all of the Johnson runners here probably one that is fascinating is Thunderous who's been running mm. in group races for you know yeah. uh, I mean we, we last time this horse won was actually in the Dante I believe um, we haven't seen this horse yeah, win he's... and now in these staying group races we're seeing this horse not really perform but stepping mm. into handicap company for the first time yeah, I know, uh, Mark 109, that's pretty is big, tough. isn't it? it? Is tough. But, I mean, we are seeing this more often, aren't we? Horses winning big handicaps off big marks. Um, it wouldn't entirely surprise me, but I feel like there might be one or two more who are better treated at the weights. Uh, like a couple of our viewers, I quite like Frank and Stella. Frank and Stella. Um, yeah, I don't know why she's not run for 97 days, but she has missed a couple of engagements recently at the last minute. I assume she's fit and ready. Um, but yeah, I feel like they wouldn't have kept her in training at, at five if they didn't think she was capable of a good bit better than she is. Uh, she's already won quite a few races. She's got a good record over the course and distance. Thought it was a it was an okay run uh, on a comeback behind a horse with no name who was chucked in that day, and she reposes with Master Milliner of ten pound better terms than when they met there. Um, yeah, I thought there's a bit to like there, and she's got an entry in the Irish Cesar, which if she wants to get in that, she's gonna have to climb quite a bit in the weights, I'd say. So, uh, yeah, Frank and Stella for me, but it's, it's wide open. It is. It's a wide open looking race. Uh, let's confirm selections then. Tom, who is it going to be for yourself? Yeah, I'm a big Alfred Boucher fan, but I also like Have You Miss Me, as uh, Dave, David mentioned there. Yeah, I, I, in the paper tomorrow, I've gone for both of those. I thought Have You Miss Me uh, ran a cracker last time against Pride of something that won a... I was on holiday, but it won a it won a uh, to the Shergar Cup day. Pride of Priory. Pride of Priory or something. Yeah, he's a big improver. And the time before that, he was second in the consolation race at Newcastle, both at Newcastle. But he does have turf form. And at Newcastle, he did much the best of those horses that raced up with the pace. He needs to settle. He's got a switcher jockey today, which I don't know if that will help or won't help. But if he settles, I think Have You Missed Me has got a good chance too. OK, Alfred Boucher and Have You Missed Me for Tom. David, who's your selection? Uh, I thought Priano was, was interesting for Roger Vera, and he had the blinkers on last time. That was over a mile six. They're trying him over two here for the first two. He's only won once, but he's been fairly consistent, and hopefully that step up to two might bring some improvement. But four places each way, it's another tricky-looking race. It is a very tricky-looking race. And, Robbie, just confirm your selection for me. Who are you going to be with? Yeah, Frank and Stella for me, Sam. Frank and Stella, loads of love for that in the chat. Looking at it here, there's plenty of love for Frank and Stella, who I'm guessing has been fairly well backed looking at this. But let's move on to the penultimate race that we're going to be looking at. It's a Phillies handicap over five furlongs. Um, and, well, looking at it, I think Pink Crystal's going to be heading the market. She is 
nine to two currently. Cuban Breeze seven to one. Sandbeck fifteen to two. International Girl eight to one. Corazon tens, and then eleven to one bar these. Pink Crystal heads the market, Robbie. I'm not surprised about this. Haggis is still going at, I think, a 29% strike rate in the last 14 days. Yeah. Um, I was actually there at Brighton the last day this horse went oh, yeah. and won. Yeah, and I thought... I was down in Brighton the other day. I, I, yeah, it's a nice race course, actually. Yeah, right? Something nice beach it. as well. Lovely view, actually, of the sea at Brighton. Yeah, big time, yeah. Um, But I was actually impressed by the way this horse won. Obviously, seeking a hat-trick here. Mm. Been put up in the weights, but looks like for Haggis, a, a rapidly improving three, Rob. Yeah, good performance. Um, Maybe looks a little skinny though in the betting, mm. considering how many sort of interesting ones we've got here. I was kind of drawn to vertiginous at a double figure price. Uh, I know she's been bang out of form this season, uh, but that's been in Group Two company. She finished last on both occasions. But I mean, she's got York form. She was fourth in the Lauva last year, um, first time blinkers. Maybe that might spark some improvement. I don't know. I mean, she needs to prove she's trained on, but. I think she might be worth a chance at a handicap of 10 to 1 at a course she handles. Okay, right, okay, well, moving on to Tom then. Let's see what he fancies in this. Nick Bradley uh, racing, actually. They've been going well at the moment, Tom, with Oscular winning at Deauville only yesterday. I think they've got three in here Fast Response, Corazon, and um, Gilded, I think, is the other one. I mean, could we potentially see these horses, especially for the trainers like Carl Burke and George Bowie, who are going great guns? Could they be a big worry in here at good prices? Your first mistake of the night, Sam. They've got five in there. <laughs> Blimey, your dad's going to be on to you if you've only found three. What, Nick they've Bradley? Got, uh, <laughs> they've got five in there, I think. Fast Response, Cameras On, Hello My Darling, Sophie's Star. No, they have, Gibby. yeah. At the bottom of the market, they've got more. Are they <laughs> going to win? The, big, the, big, question like is, the big question is, Tom, are they, are they going to go and win it? Well, I hope so, because I've backed <laughs> Corazon. Uh, uh, I thought uh, he, she... Ran a really good race at Ascot two starts ago when she was fifth. She was unlucky. It was a good race. It was the race we were talking about earlier with um, uh, Jim Goldie's horse won it and King of Stars was second and Bond Chairman were in it. And she was really unlucky. She got stopped in a run a couple of times, flew home to finish fifth, live in the moment, was in it too. I thought that was a good race. I don't know what happened last time, to be honest. She was well fancied for a race at Ascot uh, back at Shergar Cup Day and she was... Uh, she finished right down the field, actually. She was a bit disappointed. We've got a tongue tie on this time. William Buick on. I thought uh, the Bradley team might have it. They got a third of the field, and hopefully one of them will win it. Hopefully it's Corazon. I completely didn't see the other two runners in there, but Corazon for Tom there. David, who are you going to be with in this five furlong sprint? I feel like I'm just repeating myself. It's another really tricky looking York race. But the first thing to say is, of all the talk of small fields this summer, that obviously has been an issue. Isn't it great to see these, these big fields that we've got here at York this week? Uh, what is it, uh, Vincent O'Brien, you say? If you think you've got five Derby horses, you probably haven't got one. Well, I don't know what Nick Bradley racing think about this Phillies handicap. I can't believe, my apologies, I can't believe I haven't got a price boost, Nick Bradley racing to win this race. But Corazon, no surprise. It is disappointing, Tom. I apologise. Uh, well, you, no you, you, know, you know who what uh, Alfred Boucher's favourite uh, sculpture was, but you don't have a price <laughs> Five Nick Bradley runners. You are a disgrace, Mr. Stevens. Oh, well, that's the beauty of Google for you. Um, <laughs> Corazon has been very well back. No great surprise, as it's got the Tom Siegel seal of approval. Um, I thought Cuban Breeze was interesting. Ryan Moore riding for Dave Evans. Of course, they teamed up to win the Wokingham with Rohan. He's in form, Cuban Breeze. And, but again, as I say, it's another really tricky looking race. You could give a chance to plenty. OK, Cuban Breeze for David Stephen. Tom, just confirm your selection. Yeah, I like Corazon, Sam. Corazon for yourself and Robbie, who's going to be with you? Vertiginous. Vertiginous Please. in the penultimate race. Now, let's move on then to the final race we're going to be looking at on day one. It's the 520. It's a nursery handicap. Class two over six furlongs for the two-year-olds. Uh, mark it on screen now. Mrs. USA, four to one. Ramazan, 11 to two. Streets of Gold. Six to one. Kathy come home is eight. Silencer seventeen to two. And double figures bar these in here. The nursery handicaps, Tom. The races that I personally like to stay away from. Can you solve this puzzle? Uh, probably not. Is the answer to that, Sam? It looks, as you say, absolutely impossible. But I do think the market's right. I do think Mrs. USA and Ramazan are the two that have the best credentials. Whether they win or not, I don't know. It's York after all, and who knows where the best place to be is. But I think Mrs. USA has been well, sort of, I think the light might have been hiding under a bushel. George Bowie's mustard in this type of race. He's very, very good with 
progressive two-year-old. She was quite impressive. She's well bred, Philly, by Star Spangled Banner, actually. And uh, she was quite impressive. I can't remember where it was. I'm so I'm getting old. Sandown, I think it was last time, where she was really quite impressive. I think she's going to go well. I think she's well handicapped. And Ramazam, I think Richard Farr, this, this will have been on his uh, radar for a long time. The thing about them is a lot will depend on the weather. If the, if, the, if the storms hit and we get a bit of rain, I think Ramazan would be the one. If it stays fast, I prefer Mrs. USA. But I think I think they are the two. I think they're the they're the two right favourites. I think they should be at the top of the market. The other one is Silencer, who showed a ton of pace in a in a nursery at Goodwood last time, first time since uh, being gelded. It's a very good breeze up horse silencer. He's been a bit disappointing actually, but he was back to form since being gelded last time. I think he could go well. But I'm a Mrs. USA fan at heart. Provided the rain stays away, she will do for me. Mrs. USA, you and Palmer and Richie Coleman in the chat, all big fans of Mrs. USA agreeing she should be at the top of the market. David, there's an unbeaten horse in here in Streets of Gold for Eve Johnson Horton. Had a big winner last weekend with Jumby. She's going great guns at the moment. I think she could be in for a good week, Eve Johnson Horton. What do we make of her runner? Yeah, well, it's been money for it. It was 15 to 2 early on. Now in, as we can see, they're at 6 to 1. Uh, also has been money for the favourite Mrs. USA. Uh, in four to one from five to one. Now we are five places each way as we are in that previous race, I should have said as well. So I think we're going to need it. I thought Kathy Come Home was an interesting one. She won her first race and then went down to Royal Ascot and I mean, finished eighth in the Albany, but sort of, I thought, you know, that wasn't a bad eighth. She wasn't beaten all that far to finish eighth. She's been off since then, assuming there haven't been any issues. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming a bit like, you know, Tom mentioned there with Richard Fahey and Ramazan. You've got to think for Carl Burt, this meeting, this. It would have been on the you know, a target for some time out with Kathy come home. So, yeah, assuming there was no sort of reasons for a two months absence, I think Kathy come home. What is she eight to one each way? Five places will do for me. Kathy come home eight to one currently with Coral and Robbie. Last selection of the mm. night. Give us a winner. Mrs. USA. Oh, strong. It could be a good thing here. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, two seconds to uh, what's the name? Lady Hollywood. That's mm. the name. Uh, obviously. She's gone on one listed race. I mean, this horse is running off 81 here. I mean, she's definitely going to be suited by the extra furlong. She's a sister to Spangled Mac, who Bowie also trains. That horse progressed from a mark of 76 in nurseries, is now rated 97. There's going to be loads more to come as she steps up in trip. So it just looks like the stars could be aligning. I really like Bowie. I mean, he's, he's had big winners at Royal Ascot and Glorious Goodwood. I think he's going to have another one at the York Seabull meeting tomorrow. OK, yeah, George Burr said it earlier on in the show that he's going great guns at this moment in time. Right, let's get the selections confirmed. Tom, it's Mrs USA for you, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I like her. Yeah, if it rains, Ramazan will give her a race. OK, four to one currently. Ramazan also won at a decent each way price. David, who are you going to be with? Cathy come home in the finale for me. Cathy come home. And Robbie, your selection? Mrs USA. and A. Mrs USA. A lot of love in the chat for that horse there. And that's it. In terms of the race we're going to be looking at, but we are going to get the naps before we go for day one. Tom, I'll start with you. Who's going to be the best bet on day one of the Ebor Festival? Dave's uh, French sculptor for me, Alfred Boucher. <laughs> Alfred Boucher is going to be the nap on day one. David Stevens, you're not allowed to nap up a Baid, unfortunately, at two to five, but you've got to find something at a good price for us. Who are you going to be liking? I'm going to take on the world's best trainer, Charlie Appleby. I'm going to take him on in the Acom with Chaldean. OK, Chaldean, a decent price there. Like I say, a good win at Newbury last time out. And Robbie, the nap on day one. Let's leave it to the last, Sam. Um, 520 at York, Mrs USA. Mrs USA, the nap for Robbie. Four to one currently with Coral. And there we go. That's it. Naps are all done. My first ever show for Coral here on In The Know. Tom, thanks very much. I hope you have a, a good week. Ross will be back in the chair tomorrow, so you get to... No, we want you back, no, Sam. No. We want you back. <laughs> no, no, Ross will be back from Peterborough, hopefully. I think someone said in the chat that he might be there, stuck there until the Peterborough chase starts. So um, <laughs> I'm not sure it'll be that long, but Rob, he's going to be back for the rest of the week, Ross will, um, along with Paul Keeley, who's taking your place, Rob. Yeah, he is, man. I get a night day. off. I've actually not been able to go to the gym tonight, so I wasn't, wasn't too happy, but here we are. Well, I could go after, but it's getting late now, isn't it? Ah, it's fine. Think of all the delays because of Tom's technology earlier, but mm, yeah. seven twenty-five, man. What's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> like to be in bed by eight. It's, it's his bedtime, Tom. <laughs> Um, and David Stevens, you're obviously being substituted out a bit like Ross was tonight for Simon Clare tomorrow, but you are going to be back on Friday show, is that right? Yes, indeed. I've got two lovely days on the Naves Mar to look forward to, so I'll be handing over to my colleague 
And I'll be seeing you all again on Friday. Yeah, David Stevens has plenty of time to try and find the e-ball winner for Saturday. Good luck with that. And yeah, like I say, yeah, it's been a pleasure being in the hot seat replacing Ross for the evening. Hopefully you can join us tomorrow. We'll be back at six o'clock tomorrow, normal time hopefully. So do join us for that. Paul Keeley, Tom Siegel and Simon Clare will be the panel tomorrow evening. But thanks very much. We will see you soon and good night.